Ohio State's defense has allowed one touchdown through two games and held opponents to field goals on five other drives. Sometimes people throw around this term, a bend but don't break defense when you see that. And I'm Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com along with Stephen Means. We just got done with Ohio State interviews here Tuesday at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. And I asked Jim Knowles, uh, hey, what do you think, like that, that term, you like that term, uh, bend but don't break defense. And he about threw up in his mouth. He, you could tell that he hates that <laughs> concept. And he said that even in games where they're blowing people out and they're putting in young guys, he doesn't like to be bend but don't break there. It, it's more about being more assertive and, and taking control of the game. So, Stephen, do you think – that this is a bend but don't break defense, and if so, has it been good enough then through two weeks by that standard? No, it's not a bend don't break defense. It's just been a a result of how they play defense. Um, he kind of said it. He's trying to get off the field as quickly as possible and get the ball back to the offense. We've seen bend but don't break defenses basically the last three years, and it worked once, and that's because you had Chase Young breaking the other quarterback so you know it, it kind of worked out in that in that I would not call that a bend but don't break defense I would call that a, a break defense like you just broke people yeah no but like the concept of like making people drive is what they were getting at but yes you're correct Chase Young was just breaking everybody this is not that he's trying to get off the field whether it's three and outs whether it's causing turnovers or whatever it is he's not trying to have his defense out there forever and a day and so no it's not a break bend don't break. I even like the way he answered your question in a way of I don't like it I don't. It's it's almost a cop out way of saying, "Oh, look, we didn't give up a touchdown, but we still gave up points." You didn't want to give up anything. Now, if you have to, you give up the field goal over the touchdown, but you don't want to give up anything at all. Yeah, I mean, obviously, every team wants to, to do a three and out every time, yeah. and so, but some teams uh, can't do that, and some teams are more of like this bend but don't break thing, where they're you're giving up a lot of yards, but somehow keeping a team off the the board. And I think some of this started maybe when Ohio State gives up that long play the first play against Notre Dame and then holds them to a field goal and but I think through two games it's it's still not the identity that I would put on this defense I think it is supposed to be more and I guess my point being like if you think this is a bend but don't break defense and all they've played so far is Notre Dame and Arkansas State then they're bending against nothing special offensively and that's what I think could lead to a problem down the road. But I think as you look across this defense, you you see a defensive line that is kind of growing in strength each game. And the linebacker group, too, uh, I, I thought it was interesting to hear him talk about Cody Simon today because you were asking about that and how he didn't want to rotate in the back seven. That was something that we thought coming out of the preseason, back six. I guess it is. I guess it is back seven, depending on how you count. Back seven, uh, we thought coming out of the preseason camp, that they weren't going to rotate at all at linebacker and that Cody Simon was just kind of stuck as a second string guy. And then now he has a role. He's basically sharing a role with steel chambers, even though steel chambers starts, Simon's got a big role and you're seeing that group play downhill really uh, strong. I was asking Knowles today, all the blitzing that he does, how does it affect the way the mentality of a defense when you're not blitzing? Because does it kind of jumpstart something and get you thinking the right way? And he seemed to agree that it did, that it's, it's sort of creating this very aggressive mindset. So I would say that if we get to the end of this season and we're talking about how Ohio State has a defense that like gives up yards but somehow keeps the team out of the end zone, I think that is not the tightrope that this defense wants to walk on. Yeah, because gives up yards it just means that your offense isn't out there, and that means C.J. Stroud, these wide receivers, and his running backs are getting cold. You don't want that either. I think what we've seen the first two weeks are step one, which is progress. It shouldn't look like this at the end of the season, but it is pro- the first part was – Knowles just got here, and so did basically every defensive coach but Larry Johnson. Let's see who our best players are. They found that out at this point. Like, we know who their best players are, and they're going to play whoever is playing better between those best players every single week. Now let's see if it starts to make the progress we need to see through the rest of the season. And it's still so early. We didn't think Steel Chambers was going to have that role in this defense two games in the last year. And, you know, they're finding, you know, Caden Curry got to play a little bit the other night, and flashes and now they're talking about you know how do you get him more I think that's going to be a still a, a a secondary thing but but still like he's got he's had his chance to get on the field uh J.K. Johnson they're talking about Jordan Hancock being able to come back and, and help this defense uh, after being out the first two weeks and they need some help at cornerback just to kind of give some more depth and stability there so this defense is still growing I don't think this defense by any means has arrived and so maybe that's the best answer it's it's hard to put a label on this defense yet because it's still coming together we're going to talk more about that this week on Buckeye Talk. Get the text 614-350-3315 and get your questions in because our Wednesday pod 
is or a Thursday pod, whichever one, is a full on uh, rapid fire from your questions. We want to hear from our texters at Buckeye Talk.